Another thing the world misses, despite advancements in technology and living standards, is a sense of meaning and a sense of connection to something more than our material gain, which is not to be sniffed at because obviously for most people having the choice between going back to a life of subsistence in the pre-industrial age and living as we are now, they choose living now because I don't think most people find the idea of poverty all that spiritual. So Chinese culture is part of Eastern culture, right, obviously. And our crude Western conception of it is, is that they're, oh, they're not as materialistic as us. But if you come to China now, what will be apparent is that capitalism certainly has arrived here. And Chinese people are embracing the Western consumer lifestyle. And I'm saying that descriptively, I'm not judging at all because it has its massive plus points. However, when you come to a place like this right now, now what's happening here is that this is in Huangshan Shu. Tongxi, the old street of Hongwa, Huangshan City. Now, most of these buildings are old, but they've had extensive renovations and been done up to be accessible to tourists. And this includes foreign tourists and mainland Chinese tourists who, for whatever reason, find this stuff great. They can't get enough of it. Just like when Asians come to Cambridge, my local big city, uh, you can't move for Asian tourists taking pictures of the old architecture. There's something about it which is incredibly, I don't know, familiar, a huge sense of character. It makes us feel nice for some reason. It certainly would not have been the case going back 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, even before that, because what went with that was crushing poverty, right? But I think there is a coherent case to be made that we have made advances in society in some ways, and we've had a regression in other ways. The advances come in the form, obviously, of the increased living standards, the fact that most people in the West anyway, will not have to face the serious threat of starvation or dying of the common cold. But what we've lost perhaps is a sense of meaning, a link back to tradition and coming to a place like this helps us to reconnect to that. Or we feel like it does anyway. Actually it's something to do with the architecture I think the architecture and the planning space. Now, if you look, what's different about this than the normal street in the West or in China? First of all, it's walkable. It's narrow. As a pedestrian walks through here, he or she gets a sense of almost being imposed upon by the, by the buildings, which actually makes you feel comfortable sort of sort of enclosed and you feel more more engaged with the people who live and work here
also nature, trees. There's variety, there's windows, there's canopies. All of what I'm describing here has been pointed out by groups like Create Streets who do studies on this about different people around the world and what, they're, what they find aesthetically appealing in streets. It's an odd thing because it seems like a really obscure line of study, like the aesthetics of streets. But when you think about it, it's really important. You know, and it's very important to town planners. My advice to town planners would be, have a look at what people like. And it is something like this. It's the walkability. It's the, it's the feeling of sort of, you know, I don't know, almost kinship you get being able to walk observe take a gentle stroll and it's a place you want to be it's not just a means to an end to get from a to b and these aspects are common across multi many different cultures right even though chinese architecture is very different to western style architecture european style architecture it shares some of these common characteristics as i was saying there's actually another ancient village around here called Hongsun, which you actually have to pay to get into. It's an old village. Um, somebody even pff, 100 years ago in China would find this absolutely preposterous that you'd have to pay to get into what is, well, well what was essentially a peasant's village. It's very strange, you know, the more advanced we get, the more we yearn back to <laughs> something that represented um, a, a very poor lifestyle, you know. Let me know what you think. What kind of streets do you like? What kind of things do you like to go see? What do you want from a town? Think about your hometown or a city that's close by to you and the areas of that, of that city that you really like to visit. And think about some of the characteristics of it. And what don't you like about your town? I think you'll find it probably connects to this sense of history and meaning and connection to tradition. And I believe that modern town planners are sort of getting wind of this and you, you will find that new planning commissions will keep that in mind, being consistent with the pre-existing architecture and not just paving over it with a wall of glass or concrete as we might have done in the mid 20th century in the name of progress and basically getting as many people as possible into livable conditions, which is, which is fine, you know. But what do you lose in the process? Now that we have reached this state of relative abundance as a species, although there's still a lot of work to be done, maybe we can find in our list of preferences a hearkening back to when architecture and our living spaces had meaning. Tell me what you think, going a bit abstract, but if you thought that was interesting or not, give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to Shy Guy Travel Thoughts, a window into life in China. I hope to see you soon.
Xinanjiang, Xinan River, and the old part. Asian Street. The old, okay.